सो हेलो एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल so whether my, whether my audio, uh, uh, voice is audible to you all can anyone tell me whether my, my voice is audible to you all yes hi punith hello so yes i'm going to start with the session okay so i'm going to start with the today's session so right so let us quickly revise the entire psychiatry okay since you people had told that psychiatry is a little bit difficult subject okay so i'm going to come up with rap ultra rapid revision uh, i'm i came up with ultra rapid revision psychiatry session today okay i'm going to revise entire psychiatry i'm going to cover within 120 to 180 minutes okay this is a part 1 okay right so i'm going to start with the psychiatry session now so i want all of you to take notes okay so this is very very important session so all important points of psychiatry i have covered in this session and the people who have not studied psychiatry at all and watching this video for the first time i will uh, my personal suggestion to you all is okay so kindly watch this video for three times okay first watch this video in a normal speed then watch two times in uh, like 1.5x speed those who have not studied at all okay those who have studied your psychiatry you can just uh, watching once will be enough but if not you can watch one more time in 1.5x speed okay that will be sufficient for your exams okay right starting with the our today's ultra rapid revision session okay so uh, <coughs> right i want all of you to be active and take notes what i am discussing today right today's session is very very important session for all people who are going to appear for central exams okay let us start with the session okay first coming with your hallucinations okay hallucinations and pseudo hallucinations see i think all of you know this these are basic terms in psychiatry hallucination is nothing but false perception in the absence of stimuli that is called as hallucination right so what is pseudo hallucination what is called pseudo hallucination is something which pseudo is false okay it is not a true hallucination so how do we differentiate between true hallucination and false hallucination is see so true hallucination let me tell you example of auditory hallucination here if you ask a client who is suffering with this auditory hallucination he will tell you okay um, so and so i could able to hear the voices from my uh, kitchen so I, so and so i could able to hear the voices from my hall so and so i could able to hear a person talking in bedroom so the ha in hallucinations those are from the outer objective space the hallucinations will come from the outer world okay the source is outer world here okay from the outer world okay but in pseudo hallucination if you ask the client like pseudo hallucination they'll tell you okay which is not a true hallucination the patient will tell you okay so where uh, similar same auditory hallucinations if you take the patients will tell you i could able to hear the voices which are coming from my own mind okay this is what you will observe in pseudo hallucination okay the source of in pseudo hallucination will be patient's own mind okay so this is how you will differentiate between the hallucination and pseudo hallucination again i am telling you hallucination the uh, the voices which are like for example i am telling you auditory hallucination if you take he, he will say the patient will take will say i could able to hear the voices from the outer world like kitchen from the back side of my home or bedroom i could able to hear the voices but in pseudo hallucination okay they are from within the mind, within the patient's own mind he could able to hear the voices okay that is called pseudo hallucination okay i want all of you to uh, note this okay hallucination and pseudo hallucination okay right so next coming to uh, see in exam they can ask you different like mcqs can come from this hallucinations they can ask you what is the most common type of hallucination in psychotic disorders in in, in psychiatric disorders the most common type of hallucinations you see is 
auditory hallucinations okay auditory hallucinations whereas in organic disorders in organic psychiatric disorders what is the most common type of hallucination you are going to see is visual hallucination i think all of you know the types of uh, hallucinations visual hallucination auditory hallucination tactile hallucination gustatory and olfactory hallucinations these are few basic hallucinations right i think all of you might would have read this in your psychiatry right so next coming to uh, see few people will tell the, uh, few people will tell that okay cockroaches or i have attached a cockroach here see here i have attached a cockroach here few people will tell okay cockroaches are run okay they are crawling under my skin which is nothing but your tactile hallucination right especially this kind of presentation where do you see in cocaine intoxication okay coc for cocaine coc for cockroach okay coc for cockroach okay so they'll tell you cockroach cockroaches are crawling under my skin where do you see this especially you will see this in cocaine intoxication okay cocaine intoxication so which we call it as these are tactile hallucinations which we see in cocaine uh, intoxication okay and okay so they are explaining right cockroaches are crawling under my skin right this we call it as magnan phenomena what is this magnan phenomena or it is also called as formication what is this it is also called as formication okay what is this what is magnan phenomena or formication they'll tell you cockroaches are crawling under my skin okay which is nothing but your tactile hallucination this specific type of presentation we call it as magnan phenomena or formication right so now coming to i want to discuss few special types of hallucination okay there are special types of hallucination apart from your visual auditory gustatory olfactory hallucinations you have special types of hallucinations the first one is reflex hallucination what is reflex hallucination see see here okay here i will i'll be explaining okay i'll be talking more okay i'll i cannot write whatever i'm explaining to you i cannot write on the slide please make notes okay in this session i'll be speaking a lot okay see here okay uh, try to make notes okay so see here what is reflex hallucination see he will see the pen okay he will see a normal pen and say that whenever i see this pen i could able to hear the voices of deepika padukone okay whenever i see this pen i could able to hear the voices of god shiva speaking to me okay see here the stimulus is in one sense whereas hallucination which is experiencing is in another sense okay see here see he is seeing the pen and saying that he is hearing the voices of lord shiva right that means the the hallucination the stimulus is in one sense okay and the hallucination is in different sense this is called as reflex hallucination okay which is also called as synesthesia okay where do you see reflex hallucination in lsd intoxication in cannabis intoxication you will see reflex hallucination very very important okay so next coming to functional hallucination okay what is functional hallucination see here in functional in reflex hallucination they say that okay whenever i see this pen i could able to hear the voices of deepika padukone i could able to hear the voices of lord shiva speaking with me okay so Uh, so here he is seeing the pen and saying he is seeing the pen with his eyes and he is hearing the hallucination with different sensory organ okay okay two sensory organs are involved in reflex hallucination okay so stimulus will be in one sense hallucination will be in different sense that is called reflex hallucination but whereas in uh, functional hallucination see it is exactly opposite to your reflex hallucination see here the patient will tell you whenever i see this pen okay i could able to see lord ganesha sitting in front of me okay that is called functional hallucination that means both the stimulus and the hallucination are in same sense he could able to experience by the same sensory organ right so whenever i see this pen i could able to see the lord ganesha sitting in front of me this is called functional hallucination okay both the stimulus and hallucination will be in same sense that is called functional hallucination so next coming to hypnagogic hallucination okay very very important next coming to this different type of hallucination called hypnagogic type see here 
see, we have go jivo go in G hypnagogic hallucination see that means these hallucinations are experienced when the patient is going to sleep when the patient is going to bed they'll experience hallucinations that is called as hypnagogic hallucinations and next coming to hypnopompic hallucination what is hypnopompic hallucination hypnopompic hallucination is exactly opposite to your hypnagogic hypnagogic whenever the patient when patient goes to the bed or goes to sleep the patient if, if the patient experiences hallucinations that is called as hypnagogic hallucinations in hypnopompic hallucinations it is exactly opposite to hypnopompic type okay see in hypnopompic hallucinations the patient will tell you whenever he is waking up from the bed or whenever he is waking up from the sleep he will experience hallucinations that is called as hypnopompic hallucination don't confuse hypnagogic hallucination is nothing but whenever the patient goes to the bed here there is a clue okay hypnagogic okay whenever the patient goes to the bed if the patient experiences hallucination that is called as hypnagogic hallucination and what is hypnopompic hallucination it is exactly opposite to the hypnagogic okay here whenever the patient wakes up from the sleep or wakes up from the bed if he is experiencing hallucination that is called as hypnopompic hallucination okay where do you see these both type hypnagogic hallucination hypnopompic hallucination these both types are seen in narcolepsy your sleeping disorder okay narcolepsy and can you tell me the drug of choice in narcolepsy very very important mcq for your norset exam the drug of choice in narcolepsy is modafinil okay very very important okay so these are few special types of hallucination and one more type which we have is extra campaign hallucination okay he, here the patient will tell you see here the patient will tell you so i could able doctor i can able to hear voices of my uncle who is living in america okay beyond the capacity of sensory organ he is experiencing the hallucination okay who is living in okay he could able to hear the voices of his uncle who is living in america from india whether it is possible no so that's why this is called as extra campaign hallucination right okay so these are few special types of hallucination i want all of you to take notes on this okay right so next coming to thought related disorders okay right okay ha completed with our illusions hallucinations and all so right coming to thought related disorders okay just now which i am discussing is uh, everything related to your general basic psychiatry okay right so in thought related disorders we have four different types of uh, uh, four different types of thought disorders the first one which i am going to uh, tell you is Dis disorders of stream of thought okay right so coming to disorders of stream of thought the first one is flight of ideas okay first of uh, that is in stream of thought disorders the first one is flight of ideas i think all of you would have read this in your psychiatry book flight of ideas see here the patient will tell will use rhyming words okay he will he will be getting rapid thoughts and he will connect that with rhyming words that is called flight flight of ideas uh, listen to me okay here the patient will tell you okay for example if you speak with a mania patient you will see flight of ideas in mania okay if you speak with a mania patient you will get it okay okay here the patient will tell i am lily i am from delhi okay my i have a big belly i attend rally daily okay he will keep on using this rhyming words okay that is called as flight of ideas where do you see flight of ideas in mania okay again i am telling you flight of ideas means here the patient will use rhyming words okay see i have already given an example again i am repeating that example okay so if you speak with him he will speak see okay i my name is lily i i live in delhi i have a big belly i attend rally daily this is how this patient will use rhyming words that is called flight of ideas where do you see in mania right next coming to retardation of thinking okay next coming to retardation of thinking retardation of thinking is self explanatory i no need to explain this retardation of thinking is slow slow thoughts okay they could able to think very 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 slowly where do you see where the patients will be very very slow in depression right okay in depression the patients are the the thoughts are very very slow right that is called as retardation of thinking so next disorder of your stream of thought is circumstantiality 
okay very very important mcq for your norset exams what is circumstantiality see here the patient will start with a point and he will give all the unnecessary stuff and then after giving all the unnecessary stuff he will come back to the point that is called as circumstantiality i will give an example so as a nursing officer you have asked the client to tell what is your sugar level your previous sugar level okay the patient will reply to you so uh, okay he will start with the main point okay diabetes okay diabetes have a sweet urine okay urine is excreted by the kidneys so on so kidneys or excretory organs all he will give all the unnecessary stuff and finally he will say that my blood glucose level is 250 okay so this is called as circumstantiality very very important circum circumstantiality okay so he will start with the point which you have asked and give all the unnecessary stuff and then finally he will give the answer that is called as circumstantiality okay next coming to the preservation okay what is preservation see sorry perseveration what is perseveration so whatever you ask whatever question you ask the patient will give you the same answer see here okay what is your name he will say my name is okay sumanth where are you from sumanth what if what breakfast you had in the morning sumanth what is your mother name sumanth what is your father name sumanth so for all the questions whatever you ask he will give the same answer that is called perseveration okay there are two different types of perseveration which we have in psychiatry okay see here oh, in one type of perseveration the patient can tell you okay if you ask what is tomorrow tomorrow he, he will say tomorrow is tuesday a a a a okay where are you from if you ask the patient will say i am from delhi he 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 okay this is how he will speak okay he will repeat that last syllable of the word that is called as logoclonia logoclonia okay tuesday a a a a delhi e e e he will keep on repeating the last syllable of the word that is called as logoclonia which is a special type of perseveration and one more type of perseveration which we have is if you ask the patient what is tomorrow okay he will say with increasing speed he will speak okay tomorrow is tuesday 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 he will speak like this okay this is called as pallelalia okay with increasing frequency with increasing speed he will speak the same word with increasing speed he will speak that is called as pallelalia okay so what is perseveration giving same answer for all questions is perseveration okay what is logoclonia logoclonia is repeating the last syllable of the word that is called as logoclonia if you ask what is tomorrow tuesday a a a a, a he will repeat the last syllable of the word okay in pallelalia will repeat it, the same word in increasing frequency okay tuesday 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 like that he will keep on repeating the word with increasing speed that is called as pallelalia okay these are two special types of perseveration you should remember okay next coming to one more important uh, disorder like in your uh, stream of thought like i'm uh, still now i'm discussing uh, still now i'm discussing stream of thoughts only okay right so no confusions okay right psychiatry is very very important uh, so please kindly make the notes okay whatever i'm telling to you kindly make a notes right so see thought block i think again it's a self explanatory term no need to explain but let me tell you okay thought block so for example i'll tell you when you are in your uh, class okay giving seminar okay okay you will develop these thought blocks okay so you will start with the topic and you will suddenly become blank right you will suddenly become blank and forget entire topic okay that's because of anxiety right so where do you see severe uh, thought blocks is in severe anxiety okay and you will also see this thought blocks in schizophrenia very very important what is thought block again i am telling you here thought gets suddenly stopped okay so you are giving a seminar in class okay suddenly you have forgotten everything you will become blank okay and then a new thought begins similarly it happens in viva also whenever the examiner asks you questions in viva okay so you will start with the topic you will become blank and then you will start giving whatever you read you will say that right that is what is thought block okay this is due to severe anxiety and it can also be seen in schizophrenia right next coming to one more thought disorder that is your content of thought 
in content of thought which we have is exclusively in content of thought which we have is delusions okay we study only delusions in content of thought okay what are delusions it's false unshakable belief okay patin kundelik mude kallu antar okay kadra nalu kallu ante kuda nammaru that is called as delusion okay so it's a false unshakable belief even though you, if you are saying that it is not true they won't believe okay whatever they think whatever they are thinking only that they will believe that is called as delusion your false unshakable belief let me tell you few different types of delusions which we have okay right so first type of delusion which we have these delusions are very very important for mcqs in your norset exam and all central exams kindly make notes on this delusions okay so next coming to delusion of persecution which is a, okay these are the types of delusions okay delusion of persecution this is the most common type of delusion okay this is the most common type of delusion okay here the patient will tell you my parents are planning to kill me okay the my pa parents are uh, planning to harm me okay no parents will kill their own son and daughter right but so that's why this is called as delusion okay so delusion of persecution the patient will tell you my parents are going to harm me my parents are going to kill me but no parent will do that okay that is called delusion of persecution so next coming to delusion of reference okay see here here the patient will connect all the events which are happening in the surroundings with him for example okay if, if somebody is uh, laughing in the room okay somebody he is going he is walking in the road and somebody Uh, somebody some strangers are laughing he will think that he is discussing about uh, him and they are cracking jokes on him and they are laughing okay he will think like that okay and somebody is discussing something okay it is not related to him but here the patient will think okay those those people who are talking there are discussing about me and okay he he will relate all the events which is happening in the surroundings with him that is called as delusion of reference okay right right next coming to delusion of grandiosity okay what is delusion of grandiosity it's i think everyone of uh, okay like uh, it's very, very familiar term delusion of grandiosity here the patient will say that okay i am the king of the world i am the god i am the superior i am the sup okay uh, i can uh, recreate the world i have all the super powers okay they be they believe in super powers okay okay i am i am the reincarnation of the god okay god had given me special powers i can recreate the world i can recreate the human beings i can change the uh, ways of the oceans and seas in the world okay this is how the patient will talk in delusion of grandiosity okay now coming one more important point what is the other name for delusion of grandiosity can anyone tell me what is the other name of grandiosity uh, delusion of grandiosity very very important it is also called as megalomania your delusion of grandiosity is also called as megalomania and next coming to the another type which is called as delusion of love okay so here they believe that they are in uh, like this is a delusion of love see i will give an example okay here an auto rickshaw uh, person will come to you and say that okay pooja hegde is in love with me okay so and so deepika padukun is is uh, is in love with me okay then if you ask them whether you have texted deepika padukune no i have not texted whether did you meet at least one time in your life no i didn't meet whether did you at least see deepika padukun no i have not seen okay so this is how the patient will tell you in delusion of loves okay so person who has highest uh, socio economic status they feel that they are in love with them that is called as delusion of love okay which is what are the other names for delusion of love you have to know for okay delusion of love is also called as okay erotomania erotomania and fantasy lover syndrome it is also called as your delusion of love is also called as fantasy lover syndrome or it is also called as de clerambault syndrome very very important de clerambault syndrome okay whether i use the word delusion of love whether i use the word erotomania fantasy lover syndrome de clerambault syndrome it is one and the same no confusions right okay so next coming to the another type of delusion which is called as delusion of jealousy see here the patient will tell you okay 
uh, okay here the husband will tell you my wife is cheating me okay he is ha she is having affair with somebody else and she is cheating me okay my girlfriend is cheating me my wife is cheating me that will be the complaints in delusion of jealousy which is also called as morbid jealousy okay morbid jealousy or you can also call it as infidelity delusion of infidelity it's one and the same okay delusion of jealousy morbid jealousy in delusion of infidelity okay or uh, your uh, pathological jealousy it is also called as pathological jealousy it's one and the same here the patient will tell you my wife is cheating me okay my so and so my uh, girlfriend is cheating me if she is the girl okay who is suffering from this delusion of jealousy okay she will say that okay my boyfriend is cheating me so and so he's, he, he he has affairs with somebody else and he is cheating me so and so my husband is cheating me this will be the complaints in delusion of jealousy right okay right next uh, sixth type delusion of enormity very important delusion of enormity uh, here the here how see here the patient will tell okay here the patient will believe his his actions can lead to some dangerous events his actions can lead to some uh, catastrophic events for example if you ask why are you not urinating okay he will say if i urinate entire country will develop floods okay why are you not sneezing he will say if i sneeze okay entire country entire india will blow away okay so he will think that his actions will lead to some catastrophic reactions that is called as delusion of enormity okay right no confusions okay right so next coming to nihilistic delusions okay i want all of you to remember this nihilistic delusion is nothing but your cotard syndrome okay let me tell you what is nihilistic delusions first nihilistic delusions here the they won't accept they deny the existence of their own body parts or they deny the existence of the the world okay so they will say that okay uh, all the human beings in the world world are died okay all the uh, all my intestine got rotten okay nobody are surviving okay i don't have this body part that body part he will say that is called as nihilistic delusion okay again one more example i am giving you if you ask Uh, why are you not eating with that patient he will say okay no why i should eat all my gastrointestinal tract has been rotten why i should eat so i, sh I will not eat okay right so this is what is nihilism okay nihilistic delusion that means he will deny the existence of their own body parts and also they deny the existence of uh, the human beings the world okay that is called as nihilistic delusion which is also called as cotard syndrome very important okay which is also called as cotard syndrome next coming to capgras syndrome very very important which is a type of delusion okay see here in capgras syndrome the patient will tell you okay uh, he will for example he will go to his home home open his door and see his wife okay and say that you are not my wife actually who is there in his home is his wife only he will say that no you are not my wife get out of my home okay you are somebody uh, who is similar to my wife but you are not my wife okay who has similar appearance of my wife is staying in my home you are not my wife get out of my home this will be the this will be seen in capgras syndrome okay capgras syndrome exactly opposite to that is your fregoli syndrome okay fregoli syndrome here the patient will be walking on the road and he will see some strangers on the road and say that you are my wife okay in capgras syndrome what is in what in what in capgras syndrome the patient will see his own wife and say that you are not my wife he, okay get out of my home but in fregoli syndrome he will say he will see some strangers going on the road and say that you are my wife you are wearing some mask and you are changing your physical appearance since you want to follow me since you want to observe me you are changing your physical appearance you are my wife only come to home okay he will say like that that is called fregoli syndrome okay don't confuse between capgras syndrome and fregoli syndrome in capgras syndrome okay he will see his own wife and say that no you are not my wife you are somebody else 
who who has similar appearance of my wife get out of my home that is seen in crabgrass syndrome in fregoli syndrome it is exactly opposite to crabgrass syndrome he will see some stranger going on road and say that you are my wife you are wearing some face mask and uh, okay since you want to observe me you are changing your physical appearance and uh, as a stranger but you are my wife come to home that will be in fregoli syndrome okay right so no confusions between capgras syndrome and fregoli syndrome right here in uh, let me write down here in capgras syndrome familiar person is replaced by stranger he will see his own wife and say that you are stranger get out of the home but in fregoli syndrome he will see the stranger and say that you are my wife he will say that like he will say that seeing a stranger he will say that you are my wife right he will come see the stranger and say that you, they are their familiar persons okay don't confuse between capgras syndrome and fregoli syndrome uh, next coming to few important one liners very very important for your uh, norset exam they'll ask you what delusions or disorders of okay delusions of disorders of where we, where i have discussed i have already told you right delusions or disorders of content of thought okay so delusion or disorders of content of thought okay right so next coming to the another mcq what is the most common type of delusion seen the most common type of delusion seen i already told you it is delusion of persecution okay he will say my parents are going to kill me my parents are going to harm me that is seen in delusion of persecution which is the most common type of delusion if they are asking you say them that it's delusion of persecution right okay so next coming to one important mcq i have attached here i want all of you to answer this okay a depressed patient thinks that her intestines are rotten okay her intestines are rotten okay it's an example of yes uh, can anyone tell me what is what is this yes very good somebody told this it is nihilistic delusion okay it's nihilistic delusion which is also called as cotard syndrome very very important okay the other names also you should know okay not only uh, remembering like uh, delusion of nihilism nihilism you also should know it as the other names okay they will ask you in not set exam okay nihilistic delusion is also called as cotard syndrome right okay yes you are all right it is nihilistic delusion right okay so here in nihilistic delusion the patient will deny the existence of their own body parts and also they will deny the existence of the human beings okay they deny the existence of world that is called as nihilistic delusion okay right so next coming to the disorders of form of thought okay right now we have completed the thought in thought disorders i have told you four things right four types of disorders will we'll see one is stream of disorders one is form of the form of disorders another one is uh, uh, your content disorders another one is possession disorders we have completed stream uh, stream disorders and we have completed content disorders that is your delusions now coming to form of thought disorders very very important see here derailment in form of the disorders the first one we, which we are going to study now is derailment what what, what do you see in derailment okay see if you ask any question to the patient here he will say can you tell me about nehru he will say nehru was the first prime minister of india sachin tendulkar uh, won the uh, yesterday's match see there is no connection between the thought one and thought two he told about nehru and immediately he have jumped to another thought the, on sachin tendulkar right there is no connection between thought one and thought two that is called as derailment okay there is no connection between thought one and thought two that is called as derailment see here he said that nehru was the first prime minister of india and immediately he said sachin tendulkar won the match is there any connection between thought one and thought two there is no connection this is called as derailment okay right next coming to incoherence the second one incoherence what is incoherence it is nothing but your oat salad okay oat salad oat salad means he will use salad of words new words okay a bag 
desk, laptop, pen. Okay, he he keeps on giving he keeps on forming meaningless sentences. Okay, he will mix all the words. Whatever he is getting, he'll mix the words and form a sentence. Meaningless sentence. Okay, so we'll say okay, pizza, uh, pizza, pen, watch, dining table, bag, hanger. Okay, he'll mix all these sentences. Whatever is coming to mind, he will mix and form a meaningless sentence. That is called as incoherence. Next, coming to tangentiality. Okay, what is tangentiality? Is exactly opposite to your circumstantiality. In circumstantiality, I told you he will start with a point and then he will give all the unnecessary stuff and finally he will give the answer but here in tangentiality he will not give the answer he will start with the point he will give all the unnecessary stuff he will keep on beating around the bush and he will not give the answer that is called as tangentiality okay right next coming to neologism what is neologism it's again self explanatory term it, okay here the patient will discover the new words that is called as neologism okay new words okay for example what you say this head cap we all call it as head cap right which we hear here on the uh, wear on the head that is called we usually ask for give me your head cap but here the patient will ask you okay give, give me your head shoe instead of calling it as head cap he will uh, he will say head shoe that is called as he will discover his own words new words that is called as neologism where do you see neologism in schizophrenia okay right okay so next coming to clang association what is clang association see clang association is nothing but he will jump from one rhyming word to the another irrelevant rhyming word okay he will jump from one uh, uh, rhyming word to the another irrelevant rhyming word see for example my name is sam i like jam okay i travel in tram okay so he is jumping on he is using some rhyming words and keep on jumping the irrelevant uh, rhyming words okay my name is sam i like jam i live i travel in tram okay he keep on jumping to the irrelevant rhyming words that is called as clang association okay right so next coming to the last one that is your disorders of possession of thought okay Disor disorders of possession of thought is nothing but your thought insertion withdrawal broadcasting comes in possession of thought i think these are self explanatory terms but let me explain you uh, here okay thought insertion here the patient will tell you it's self explanatory but let me tell you thought insertion is nothing but here the patient will tell you thoughts somebody is inserting the thoughts and okay that is called thought insertion okay thought withdrawal okay somebody are withdrawing thoughts from my brain okay that is that will be the complaint in thought withdrawal in thought broadcasting what is broadcasting okay it's self explanatory again thought broadcast in thought broadcasting the patient will tell you see doctor my thoughts uh, i uh, thoughts are getting escaped from my mind and everyone the people who are uh, the people surrounding me can access that okay the thoughts are escaping from the mind from my mind that will be the complaint in thought broadcasting okay so these are few important terms that you should know in disorders of possession right so next coming to one more disorders of possession is your obsessions very very important okay which you see in ocd ocd obsessive compulsive disorder here here the patient knows that the thoughts which are coming uh, in obsessions obsessive compulsive disorder the obsessions you know they are intrusive thoughts right the obsessions are nothing but they are intrusive thoughts okay that means uh, the patient the patient's all the patient also knows that the thoughts which are which he is getting are unwanted senseless and irrational okay he will try to avoid he will not accept those thoughts okay that is called as ego dystonic he will not accept the thoughts okay what happens uh, obsession in obsession uh, obsessive uh, in ocd obsessive compulsive disorder okay they will have an obsession of contamination of hands and they'll go wash their hands right so here the patient knows the thought which they are getting the obsession which they are getting is unwanted irrational okay they, they will try to uh, avoid that okay they will not accept that that is called as ego dystonic okay they will try to uh, avoid the thoughts they will try they will not accept the thoughts that is called as ego dystonic okay very very important and the, the thoughts which are seen in obsessions are senseless and irrational okay they know that the patient knows okay the thoughts which they are getting are senseless and irrational okay that that is what is your obsessions which where do you see in ocd right okay
right i think you understood about this i think uh, yes i i think you all understood right next coming to yes we uh, we have completed with our thought disorders now coming to the difference on one more topic psychosis versus neurosis okay what is the difference between psychotic disorders and neurotic disorders in psychotic disorders insight is absent okay insight is absent okay let me write down here insight is absent whereas in neurotic disorders the insight is present what is insight insight is nothing but awareness of their own self condition that is called as insight okay see in schizophrenia psychosis is nothing but example you can take schizophrenia schizophrenia patients they don't have insight okay uh, that means they don't know that they are suffering from schizophrenia but neurosis in neurosis like you can take uh, example depression okay depression patients they very well know that they are diagnosed with depression they are suffering with depression and they are on treatment of depression okay they are aware of their own self condition that is called as insight okay which is absent in psychotic disorders which is present in your neurotic disorders okay schizophrenia patient they are not aware of their own condition okay that they are suffering with schizophrenia but in neurosis like depression they know they are suffering from depression okay they are uh, they are getting treated with depression they are very well aware of their own self condition that is called as neurotic neuro, that is the difference between psychosis and neurosis and one more important differentiating point is hallucinations and delusions okay hallucinations and delusions are present in your psychosis they are absent in your neurotic disorders okay but let me tell you one here this is only theoretically this is correct but practically this is wrong okay okay since it, it is published in the books i am telling you but practically this is wrong most of the schizophrenia patient they are they, they very well know that they are suffering from schizophrenia okay that means insight is present in psychosis most of the neurotic disorders like uh, um, depression they are lack they, they lack insight okay they are not aware of their own self condition okay it is exactly opposite practically okay but uh, theoretically this is how we differentiate psychosis from neurosis okay right now coming to syndromes in psychiatry very 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 important i want all of you to take notes on this okay syndromes in psychiatry i have compiled all the syndromes in a single page okay whatever the syndromes that will be asked in uh, your norset exam i have compiled it in a single page okay so now coming to the first syndrome in psychiatry brickwet syndrome what is brickwet syndrome it's a old name of your somatoform disorder okay old name of your somatoform disorder is your brickwet syndrome and what is dicklerembal syndrome i have already told you what is dicklerembal syndrome it is also known as delusion of love okay i have already told you right when i am discussing delusions there i have told you right delusion of love okay so and so deepika padukone is in love with me so and so pooja hegde is in love with me is nothing but dicklerembal syndrome delusion of love so next coming to cotard syndrome is nothing but your nihilism okay cotard syndrome is nothing but your nihilistic delusion other name of nihilistic delusion cotard syndrome is other name of nihilistic delusion okay next next coming to ekbom syndrome what is ekbom syndrome i think uh, yes we are going live okay so next coming to what is ekbom syndrome right can anyone tell me what is ekbom syndrome it is nothing but delusion of infestation delusion of infestation i didn't say this in delusion uh, when i am discussing delusions but let me tell you here delusions of infestation spelling error don't mind my handwriting okay since i want to say it fastly i'm scribbling it don't my don't mind my handwriting okay so in ekbom syndrome they'll have delusion of infestation that means they are infest i think you people know the difference between infection and infestation right so here the patient will tell you doctor i got infested with parasites i got infested with some small visible organism that will be the complaint that is nothing but your ekbom syndrome okay is nothing but delusion of infestation next coming to one more syndrome called othello syndrome what is othello syndrome i think most of the question papers they have asked this question okay othello syndrome very very important okay i am giving few marks on this what is othello syndrome is nothing but delusion of jealousy while i am discussing del the de delusions i have told you right delusion of jealousy that means 
your dilution of infidelity right here i told you right see here dilution of jealousy i have told you here okay is nothing but the patient will tell so and so my wife is cheating me so and so my girlfriend is cheating me they are having affair with somebody else and they are cheating me that is that will be seen in dilution of jealousy the other name of dilution of, dilution of jealousy is nothing but you are uh, coat uh, othello syndrome very very important right next coming to one more syndrome called ganser syndrome what is ganser syndrome ganser syndrome where do you see you exclusively see this in prisoners okay prisoners and what you are going to observe in ganser syndrome okay something you will observe called pseudo stupidity pseudo stupidity what is pseudo stupidity if you ask what is the color of the sky the patient will tell you the prisoner will tell you orange okay but purposefully he will not say what is the color of the sky it is blue right but the patient will tell you it is orange okay the patient purposefully is not giving the answer that is what is ganser syndrome okay so where do you see ganser syndrome in prisoners what what do you observe in ganser syndrome pseudo stupidity what is pseudo stupidity see here exactly opposite answer he will give see if you ask what is the color of the sky he will say it is orange okay but it he is not giving purposefully he is not doing this purposefully that is called as ganser syndrome okay next coming to one more syndrome called da costa syndrome very very important da costa syndrome is also called as cardiac neurosis see here here the patient will go to the cardiologist okay will go to the cardiologist so and so having chest pain this pain that pain with cardiac symptoms they'll go to the cardiologist usually they don't have any cardiac symptoms but they visit cardiologist because they are worried of the overcoming diseases in the future okay they are worried of overcoming diseases in the future and they visit to the cardiologist saying so and so i have chest pain so and so i have chest tightness okay so usually they don't have any underlying cardiac illness that is what is called as da costa syndrome okay next coming to munchausen syndrome uh next coming to munchausen syndrome so let me tell you okay next coming to uh, okay right i think i am not uh, interacting with you people since i want to complete this uh, topic very fastly okay so i am not interacting with you if, if you have any doubts you can ask me if you have any doubts you can ask me okay right next coming to munchausen syndrome right what is munchausen syndrome it is nothing but doctor shopping okay very very familiar term doctor shopping see in da costa syndrome the patient will go to the cardiologist but in munchausen syndrome the patient almost he will cover all the departments okay gastroenterology hematology endocrinology almost all departments he will cover okay okay he will mostly visit the junior doctors he will go to go and visit the junior doctors saying say, say, saying that i have this symptom i have, I have stomach pain abdominal pain uh, this pain that pain usually they don't have any symptoms they are telling lies to the doctor for medical attention okay see here the patients in munchausen syndrome will tell lies to the doctor for medical attention that okay that is called as pseudologia fantastica okay pseudologia fantastica what is pseudologia fantastica just now i told you telling lies to the doctors for medical attention okay is nothing but pseudologia fantastica okay this is what is munchausen syndrome munchausen syndrome is the old term what is the new name of munchausen syndrome factitious disorder factitious disorder okay right next i think completed with our syndromes in psychiatry now coming to the schizophrenia okay right psychotic disorders okay right so uh, four a's of bleuler uh, so, uh, four a's of bleuler will study this i think you are all familiar with this four a's of bleuler let me tell you fastly okay so little bit i'll going fast okay so uh, and i'll i'll not be uh, writing any notes here on the slides because i need to explain a lot i cannot write on the slides please you people make uh, notes on your uh, please take your own notes okay 
and I'll share you the notes once my session gets completed, right? Okay. So next, coming to four A's of Bloiler. The first A is autistic thinking. The first A is autistic thinking. Okay. Okay. Miss Estrogen, I'll tell you hypochondriasis also. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, only syndromes I have told you, right? Only syndromes I have told you here. The, now coming to schizophrenia, the four A's of Bloiler. The first A stands for autistic thinking. What is autistic thinking? See here, don't confuse this with your childhood autism. Childhood autistic disorder is different. This autism is different. This autistic in schizophrenia is different. And the childhood autism is different. Both are two different clinical entities. Okay, don't confuse. Okay, so here the autistic thinking means fantasies, daydream. Okay, so here the patient will think, yes, I am the king of the, I am the king in the world. I am the richest person in the world. Okay, he will be having his own fantasies. That is called as autistic thinking. Next coming to ambivalence. See, ambivalence is lack of decision making okay so he he cannot make his own decision for example if you he, he will go purchase an ice cream he'll open the wrapper and think that whether i should eat this ice cream or not whether i should eat this ice cream or not okay that okay they cannot make decisions that is called as ambivalence okay next coming to your affect disturbances here especially you the patients will have inappropriate effect what is inappropriate effect see if you go to any death ceremony usually how you will be will you be happy or sad most of yes in death ceremony obviously you will be sad but the patients here schizophrenia patients they will be laughing in death death ceremony okay and in birthday parties similarly when you attend birthday parties you will be happy or sad you will be happy right but schizophrenia patients will be sad okay it exactly opposite they will do that is called as inappropriate effect okay next coming to uh, association disturbances okay then association is association disturbances is nothing but lack of dis association between thoughts okay lack of association okay so in a single thought there okay in a single thought the connection is lost that is called as lack of association what is lack of association in a single thought there will be loss of connection that is called as lack of association these are four a's of bloiler next coming to the snyder's 11 first rank symptoms let me fastly discuss this first rank symptoms of snyder very very important okay so coming to three thought phenomena you have in snyder's first rank symptoms you have three thought phenomena you have made phenomena and you have also something called auditory hallucinations let me tell you explain one by one okay what is thought phenomena see in thought phenomena okay i already explained this right they'll have thought insertion withdrawal and broadcasting i have already explained this okay no need to explain once again so next coming to th made phenomena made what is made see made okay what is mean by made okay here uh, the patient will tell you somebody is controlling my emotions somebody is controlling my movement somebody is controlling my actions that is called as made phenomena that means all his actions and emotions are com controlled by some external forces that will be the complaint in your made phenomena okay the first one coming to first one volition what is volition see here the patient suddenly will go put his hand in the running fan okay are you getting me see in volition suddenly he will go and put his hands in the running fan and say that no 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 i am not putting my hands in the fan somebody is controlling me and making me to keep my hands in the running fan okay that is called volition okay next effect what is effect in made phenomena is is something related to your emotions okay so suddenly the patient will laugh okay suddenly the patient will laugh and say that no 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 i didn't laugh somebody made me to laugh suddenly the patient will cry and say that no 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 i didn't cry somebody made me to cry that's that, that is seen in uh, effect okay what is uh, this impulse impulse is nothing but okay sudden desire to act is nothing but impulse okay impulse is nothing but sudden desire to act so if a doctor goes okay if a nursing officer goes to the bedside of a schizophrenia patient 
he will slap okay he will give you a slap and say that no 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 i didn't slap you somebody made me to slap you okay somebody is controlling me somebody made me to slap you okay so this is how so be careful with schizophrenia patients so this is how the is something called impulse okay impulse is sudden desire to act suddenly will slap okay doctor or nursing officer and say that yes they they didn't slap somebody is controlling so somebody made me to slap that will be the complaint here now coming to th auditory hallucinations okay three types of auditory hallucinations you all know the most common type of hallucination in schizophrenia is auditory hallucination in that auditory hallucinations also we have three different types of hallucinations which the patient can experience the first one is voices arguing okay see voices arguing is nothing but the patient will tell you doctor or nursing officer uh, doctor sir i could able to hear some two different persons uh, talking each other in my kitchen two different persons talking each other about me in my washroom two different persons talking in my hall so that okay so as a third person he will hear the conversation right so that's why this is called as third person hallucination third person auditory hallucination okay third person auditory hallucination so here he will say that two different persons are talking each other and as a third person he, he is hearing that right so that's why this is called as third person hallucination next running commentary running commentary is nothing but okay all his actions he will receive the comments for that okay okay so if okay, he is going to the washroom so so and so suman is going for the washroom okay he is going to he, he is drinking water he will he will receive the voice sumanth is drinking water okay and he is sumanth is okay if he is staring the case he will receive the comments okay he will hear the comments okay sumanth is staring the case he is um, he is on the stairs okay he is staring the case like that he will receive the comments for all his actions that is called running commentary okay next audible thoughts coming to what is audible thoughts okay one one more type of auditory hallucination see here the patient will tell you sir whatever i am thinking i could able to hear it as thoughts just now i thought of this i could i could able to hear of that from the outside okay i i thought of going and drinking water and suddenly i got a suddenly i got a voice that sumanth is going to drink water that is nothing but audit, audible thoughts okay whatever he think is uh, whatever is thinking he will get the same thought as voices that is called as audible thoughts okay very very important next i think we have completed with uh, this uh, next coming to the 10th symptom of your snider 11 first rank symptoms 10th symptom is delusional perception see for a normal perception see when i see this pen do i think anything no i think uh, i'll take it as a pen right but here schizophrenia patients they'll take they'll see the pen and think that they after seeing this pen they'll think that yes i am the richest person in the country i am the king of the country for a normal perception they will attach delusion that is called as delusional perception okay see normal perception is seeing pen okay but he will add delusion that but when i see when he sees pen he will think that he is the king of the world that is called delusional perception okay so for a normal perception he is adding delusion that is called as delusional perception okay next coming to somatic passivity what is somatic passivity what is somatic passivity here the patient will experience tactile hallucinations and say that somebody is uh, throwing that tactile hallucinations okay okay he will say that insects are crawling under my skin which is nothing but tactile hallucination and he will say that somebody are throwing insects on me and causing this tactile insulation in, in hallucination okay he will say that i have burning sensation on uh, on my hand okay if you ask him why you are experiencing this burning sensation he will say that somebody from america are throwing uv rays and causing this burning sensation okay that is called as somatic passivity okay somatic passivity he will experience the tactile hallucinations and say that somebody is uh, causing that 
tactile hallucinations that is called somatic passivity so now coming to the clinical features of schizophrenia very very important the people who are sleeping should wake up now it's very very important right so coming to positive symptoms negative symptoms just now okay we have discussed something right so hallucinations and delusions or your positive symptoms what do you mean by positive symptoms positive okay no need to worry at all okay positive symptoms they are easy to treat easy to treat and they will have good prognosis okay let me write down here positive symptoms okay they will have good prognosis but negative symptoms it's very difficult to treat and they'll have poor prognosis okay hallucinations and delusions comes in your positive symptoms okay the, okay now uh, you people are going to answer me what is the most common type of hallucination which we see is in schizophrenia is auditory hallucination in psychiatric disorders anywhere in uh, norset exam if they are asking you what is the most common type of hallucinations in psychiatric disorders is it, is it is auditory hallucination sorry auditory hallucination okay second most common type is your visual hallucination okay and what is the most common type of delusion i have already told you it is delusion of persecution okay so and so my parents are going to kill me so and so my parents are going to harm me is nothing but delusion of persecution okay if if you see delusions and hallucinations okay it's very easy to treat that patients and they will have good prognosis also but whereas what is negative symptoms wherever you see negative you should worry about that right okay so negative all a's comes under negative okay all a's okay first a let me uh, let me tell you one by one what is your all a's are negative symptoms okay a for evolution evolution is na nothing but lack of drive okay so in schizophrenia patient if you observe them they they want brush they want uh, maintain their personal grooming they want brush bath they want wash their face okay okay that is nothing but lack of drive to do some goal di uh, goal directed behavior okay that is nothing but evolution okay lack of drive to brush lack of drive drive to bath lack of drive to eat all these are nothing but evolution so lack of drive is nothing but your evolution okay so what is apathy apathy is lack of concern okay if a schizophrenia if a student with schizophrenia if a student who is suffering with schizophrenia had failed in exam okay usually if you fail in exam you will worry but the schizophrenia patient will not worry at all okay they don't they don't care at all okay they do, okay that is called apathy okay lack of concern is nothing but your apathy okay a patient with schizophrenia had failed in exam they are not worried that is called as apathy next coming to anhedonia what is anhedonia can anyone tell me what is anhedonia what is anhedonia yes very nice wasn't this uh, telling that yes lack of pleasure from previously pleasure seeking events that is called as anhedonia i think all of you know this next coming to a sociality what is a sociality self explanatory again no need to explain right self ex uh, a sociality in means he want to be single he don't want to mingle that is what is a sociality so next coming to effective flattening effective flattening is nothing but uh, okay lack of expressions okay so let me write down here it is lack of expressions okay okay right see here what even the patient is happy the facial ex extremely happy there is no expressions even the patient is extremely sad same facial expression okay the lack of expressions okay to ventilate their emotions that is called as effective flattening okay the face will not have any expressions at all that is called as effective flattening next coming to elogia elogia is again self explanatory term i no need to explain this what is elogia lack of speech output or decreased speech output elogia is nothing but up lack of speech output lack of speech is nothing but your elogia right so all your as or negative symptoms remember always negative symptoms if you are seeing in the schizophrenia patient 
that is very difficult to treat and it is associated with poor prognosis okay whereas your positive symptoms are associated with good prognosis your negative symptoms are associated with poor prognosis so next coming to catatonia okay your catatonic schizophrenia okay so let me explain you one by one okay first one is stupor very very important catatonic schizophrenia questions are going to come from catatonic uh, schizophrenia they will ask you this terminologies okay so let me quickly revise this what is this stupor stupor is nothing but lack of movements okay they won't move at all immobile completely immobile that is called as stupor okay so next one is excitement what is excitement it is exactly to stupor stupor the patient will be sitting calm they will not move they, they are immobile but in excitement they will be jumping they will be running so and so the, okay that is called excitement okay and next coming to mutism what is mutism in stupor here in stupor the there is no movements that is called as stupor in, in mutism there is no verbal response okay the patients will not at all speak they are completely mute that is called as mutism okay next coming to waxy flexibility what is waxy flexibility can anyone tell me okay the patient movements the movements in the patients becomes as flexible as wax when you try to move, move the joints in the uh, when you take a candle and when you uh, when you try to bend it what type of resistance you can feel similarly you can feel when you try to movements uh, when you try to move the joints in the schizophrenia catatonia patients okay that is what is nothing but waxy flexibility what is waxy flexibility the movements in the patients becomes as flexible as your candle wax that is called as waxy flexibility and next coming to posturing what is posturing maintaining the difficult posture for long time can you stand on uh, uh, can you stand on one leg for a prolonged period of time no you and me cannot stand but schizophrenia patients can stand for long time with a single leg they can stand for prolonged period of time even though that is causing discomfort to them that is called as posturing right next coming to automatic obedience what is automatic obedience see see listen to me if i ask you okay so and so person okay if you okay show me your back if you show your back i am going to beat with my stick okay so but vasant will not show because he is a normal person okay he knows that i am going to beat him and he will not show his back but schizophrenia patient okay so even though you say them if you show your back i am going to beat they, they are not aware they will not think about the consequences okay they will show the back okay you can beat me okay they will, that is called excessive cooperation okay that is nothing but automatic obedience okay they will show back no problem you can beat me okay so that is what is automatic obedience okay they are excessive cooperation they will not think about the consequences and they'll cooperate with you that is called as automatic obedience i think everyone should be like this okay next coming to negativism negativism is again self explanatory exactly opposite to you the what you say the patient will do okay for example if you ask schizophrenia patient to sit he will stand if you ask to stand he will sit that is what is negativism okay exactly opposite to you he will do that and next coming to echolalia what is echolalia yes echolalia is nothing but repeating the pay, uh, examiner's words repeating the examiner's words is nothing but echolalia okay as a nursing officer you go and ask what is your name with the schizophrenia patient he will say what is your name okay he will repeat the same word what you have said okay that is called echolalia next coming to echopraxia what is echopraxia repeating the examiner's movements repeats the repeating the examiner's movements okay so in front of the patient okay you have scratched your head like this the patient also will scratch the head like this okay that is called as echopraxia okay echolalia is repeating the examiner words and echopraxia is repeating the sorry uh, it is not words it is movements echopraxia is movements okay repeating the movements okay that is called as echopraxia as a nurse if you uh, as a nursing officer if you scratch your head the patient also will scratch the head that is called as echopraxia okay don't confuse between lalia and praxia lalia is something related to words praxia is something related to movements 
okay right next coming to grimacing what is grimacing the patient will have odd facial expressions okay he will give bad uh, facial expressions that is called as grimacing next coming to ambivalence what is ambivalence i have already told you this okay the patient will buy uh, purchase an ice cream okay and then he will take the ice cream into the hand and he and he will think that whether i should eat this ice cream or not whether i should eat this ice cream or not okay if you call the patient inside the come inside the room the patient will think whether i should step in whether i should step out whether i should enter into the room or whether i should go back to the my uh, whether i should go back out of the room he will okay is nothing ambivalence is nothing but lack of decision making it's nothing but ambivalence next coming to stereotypy what is stereotypy stereotypy is nothing but repeating the purposeless movements very very important please make a note repeating purposeless movements purposeless movements is nothing but stereotypy see keep on do schizophrenia patients keep on doing like this what is this is there any purpose to this no right this is called stereotypy and exactly opposite to your stereotypy is mannerism what is mannerism in repeating the purposeful movements okay it is purposeful movements purposeful movements see in mannerism uh, he keep on doing like this okay he will keep on doing like this okay that is called mannerism see here he is trying to set set right his shirt right set right his shirt there is a purpose okay he want to set right his shirt right but doing in an exaggerated way is mannerism okay seeing hod and uh, if if you see your hod you will wish for one time and leave but uh, the people with schizophrenia or ca this catatonia they will keep on wishing the hod they will keep on wishing they will keep on saluting their hod okay so if you, if they see 100 times in a day they will wish 100 times uh, their hod no need to wish right if you are seeing hod for 100 times do you will you wish 100 times no but catatonia patients will keep on wishing there is a purpose in this okay he is uh, like he is wishing the other but he is doing in an exaggerated way that is called as mannerism okay don't confuse stereotypy is purposeless movements mannerism is purposeful movements okay now okay next okay so next timeline for diagnosis very 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 important very important i am telling you timeline for diagnosis of schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders i'll tell you now okay first let me tell you okay if they are having psychotic symptoms okay psychotic symptoms the previous symptoms which i have discussed all the clinical pages are schizophrenia only right if they are experiencing those symptoms for one uh, six months according to your dsm5 if the patient is experiencing those symptoms for 6 months then you can diagnose very well the client with schizophrenia but according to icd11 okay it is 1 month according to uh, it is 1 month okay according to uh, dsm5 it is 6 months according to D icd11 it is 1 month no confusions in that okay right next schizophreniform disorder okay to diagnose schizophreniform disorder okay if you are uh, having uh, psychotic symptoms for less than 6 months okay 1 to 6 months is not you will diagnose that with schizophreniform disorder schizophrenia is more than 6 months but schizophreniform when you call if the uh, the patient is experiencing experiencing this uh, 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 schizophrenia symptoms for one less than 6 months you will call it as schizophreniform disorder okay less than 1 month what you call less than 1 month it is called as brief psychotic disorder okay no confusion schizophrenia you will diagnose if the symptoms are more than 6 months the sy symptoms are more than 6 months okay according to dsm5 according to icd11 it is 1 month but schizophreniform disorders if the symptoms are less than 1 6 month 6 months then you will say that it is schizophreniform disorder if it, if the symptoms are less than 1 month then you call it as brief psychotic disorder okay these are the timeline for diagnosis of psychotic disorders very very important okay any confusions in this do you have any confusions in this can anyone tell me what can anyone tell me do you have any confusions in this 
tell me yes or no so right okay thank you all uh, right, next coming to this so be patient okay so listen to this live discussion okay by, by today you will complete half of the psychiatry okay right by today you, you are going to complete half of the psychiatry don't worry right uh, patiently listen to the session that's enough right so next coming to one more important update i would like to give to you all this update should be written in your notes okay okay i want all of you to write this update in your notes okay uh, now you can ask me sir why didn't you say about uh, that subtypes of schizophrenia uh, that uh, simple schizophrenia hebiprenic schizophrenia catatonic schizophrenia we have different types of schizophrenia right now you can ask me why didn't you explain that okay all those subtypes are removed okay they are removed by icd 11 okay icd 10 dsm 4 they have the subtypes but the latest uh, thing which we are following is ID, icd 11 and dsm 5 criteria right so this icd 11 and dsm 5 had removed the subtypes of schizophrenia okay they have removed the subtypes of schizophrenia and one more important update is catatonic schizophrenia is also a subtype right previously but now it is not a subtype it is a separate diagnosis your catatonic schizophrenia is a separate diagnosis okay it is a separate condition okay it is no, uh, not included in your uh, schizophrenia okay this is an update i want all of you take screenshot at least okay next one more important mcq related to schizophrenia if the patient of schizophrenia also has self mutilating okay if they are damaging themselves okay, like if they are hurting themselves that is called self mutilation self mutilation is nothing but hurting themselves okay if the schizophrenia patient is uh, hurting themselves frequently then we call it as van gogh van gogh syndrome okay schizophrenia along with self mutilation if you are seeing in them then you call uh, you call it as van gogh syndrome kindly rem uh, remember this for your norset exam now completed with our schizophrenia coming to bipolar disorder okay bpd bipolar disorder what comes what are the conditions which we see in bipolar disorder is your mania hypomania you will also see depression you will also see something called uh, mixed affective disorder mixed affective disorder all this will include your bpd okay your bpd bipolar disorder it includes mania and hypomania it includes depression it also includes a mixed affective disorder mixed affective disorder is nothing but they will have depression along with hypomania that is called as mixed affective disorder now you will ask me sir what is hypomania hypomania is nothing but mild form of mania is called as hypomania right okay in mania you will see delusion of grandiosity right so and so i am the god so and so i am the uh, i have superpowers i can control this i can recreate the world that is called delusion of grandiosity i have told you right so in mania you will see delusion of grandiosity but where in hypomania you will not never see delusions of gra grandiosity okay so that is how you will differentiate hypomania with mania okay mania is you will see delusion of grandiosity but in hypomania uh, you will not see delus delusions of grandiosity and hy hypomania is in one word if you ask me it is mild form of mania that is called as hypomania right next coming to types i think you people know there are two types of bpd type 1 bpd type 2 bpd type 1 bpd includes your mania okay mania mania with depression okay mania with hypomania everything is okay it in okay it is type 1 bpd okay you will see mania here okay but here in type 2 bpd what is type 2 bpd you will never see mania here you will never see mania very very important okay you will never see mania in type 2 bpd you will see only hypomania okay hypomania plus hypomania with depression all things these things can be seen in type 2 bpd but in type 2 bpd you will never see mania okay in type 1 bpd you will see mania but in type 2 bpd you will not see 
mania that is how, that is the difference between type 1 and type 2 bpd okay next coming to clinical features of mania so how we will remember the clinical features of mania you can remember with the mnemonic called dig fast okay with a mnemonic called dig fast d for distractibility the uh, mania patients are easily distractible right and they are impulsive and they are all they will also have grandiosity ideas a delusion of grandiosity right i already told you delusion of grandiosity is also called as megalomania mania 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 right you can remember like this grandiosity is also called delusion of grandiosity is also called as megalomania where do you see megalomania in mania right right i have already explained what is delusion of grandiosity no need, again no need to explain it so flight of ideas i have already explained it again no need to explain activity see there is increased activity in mania they will be jumping they will be running okay so the psychomotor activity is high in mania patients okay so sleep what happens to sleep in mania they won't sleep okay there is decreased sleep in mania and they are more talkative okay they are more talkative mania patients they are more talkative okay these are the uh, clinical features of mania you can remember clinical clinical features of mania with dig fast okay right so now next similarly how we have discussed the timeline for diagnosis of psychotic disorders for mood disorders what is the timeline very very important i want all of you to remember timeline very very important for exam mania what is the timeline for diagnosis if the symptoms if you see these symptoms these dig fast symptoms okay for one week then you can diagnose mania hypomania four days is enough to diagnose hypomania depression remember depression is different okay depression is not dig fast okay let me tell you but i have included here since it's a mood disorder how you will diagnose depression it is two weeks very important very nice it is two weeks okay right so mania the timeline for diagnosis of mania is one week hypomania if the symptoms are there for four days you will diagnose hypomania if the depression symptoms are there for two weeks you will diagnose it as depression but okay let me discuss few important uh, terminologies in your mood disorders okay fastly what is euthymia remember see my dear friends please remember thymia means mood mood okay so euthymia u is good okay thymia is mood okay it's normal mood euthymia means normal mood what is dysthymia dys what is this decreased mood okay decreased mood it's nothing but what is decreased mood which we call it as depression right so then you will ask me sir what is the difference between depression and dysthymia see dysthymia is nothing but mild form of depression is called as dysthymia okay mild depression we call it as dysthymia similarly cyclothymia mild form of bpd is called as cyclothymia okay so timeline for diagnosis of dysthymia and cyclothymia are two years okay two years okay very important so next coming to depression what is depression how you will remember the signs and symptoms of depression is by sige caps okay there will be nine to total nine symptoms okay <clears throat> okay i have highlighted sige caps okay you will remember like sig caps okay so s for sadness and sleep okay they will be sad depression clients you know they will be sad and they will not uh, sleep there will be uh, like uh, sleep can be increased or decreased it can be increased or decreased in depression and interest deficit okay interest deficit they will have in interest deficit and they will feel guilt guilt is nothing but your hopelessness they will feel hopelessness they will they will feel hopeless uh, worthless and helpless very very important we call it as cognitive triad right cognitive triad is given by whom very very important mcq for your not set exam cognitive triad hopelessness worthlessness helplessness is given by whom aron beck okay very very important so next coming to energy deficit okay no need to explain it's a self explanatory and concentration is decreased in uh, depression and appetite what happens to appetite it can be increased okay few people will eat more few people will not eat at all okay appetite can be increased or decreased psychomotor activity is decreased in depression and suicidal thoughts are seen in depression this this is how these are the symptoms of depression totally there are nine symptoms out of this 
okay out of this nine symptoms if five symptoms are present for two weeks then you can say that okay uh, five symptoms are present for two weeks then you will diagnose that patient with depression okay right so here what you you people have to remember is aron back okay cognitive triad is given by aron back okay your helplessness worthlessness and uh, what is this worth uh, hopelessness okay that is called cognitive triad which is given by aron back very important mcq next coming to one more image based question from depression that they can ask you is okay uh, see here this is how the face of depression will look depressed client will look okay see this depressed client see here you can find a triangular area here right okay so in the upper fold towards the nasal area in the upper eyelid you can find a triangle triangular area which we call it as veragut fold veragut fold and see the folds here skin folds here it is okay see the skin folds here it is appearing like omega right shape of the omega the forehead see the forehead skin multiple foldings it is having right like shape of the omega right like this omega so that is why this is called as omega sign okay the four this is called as omega sign right next coming to atypical depression very very important this is the most common type of depression the previously which i told is sige caps which i told right that is your uh, major depressive disorder or unipolar depression which we call it as okay that is not the commonly seen type of depression your atypical depression is most commonly seen clinically okay most common type of uh, depression is atypical depression see here the patient here what what do you see in atypical depression is mood reactive okay the patient mood reactive what do you mean by mood reactive is see the patient will be sad and once he go and see a movie any positive event okay once he go and see a movie he will become normal okay after positive event he will become normal that is called mood reactive and what is hyperphagia excessive sleep what is hyperphagia excessive eating and what is lead in paralysis i want all all of to you uh, you to write this lead in paralysis lead in par paralysis means okay um, okay sometimes you you want i think uh, some uh, in at least one time we would have experienced this leading paralysis they won't they won't wake up at all from the bed okay they always try to sleep on the bed okay they always like to sleep on the bed okay since there is heavy feeling in the arms and legs these depressed patients will uh, they don't want to get up from the bed <laughs> they don't want to sleep all the time that is called leading paralysis okay right these are the symptoms which you see in atypical depression okay the atypical depression is most common type don't okay unipolar depression or major depressive disorder that sige caps is not most common the most common is atypical depression okay here you have to remember lead in paralysis what in what is lead in paralysis the patient don't want to get up from the bed okay always he want to sleep that is called lead in paralysis okay next coming to personality disorders very very important okay you all know in personality disorders we have cluster a cluster b cluster c coming to cluster a okay cluster a includes paranoid paranoid schizotypal schizoid see paranoid first of all talking about paranoid personality disorder very very important personality disorders will be asked as mcqs okay so if you are see i have highlighted the words here okay you can see i have highlighted the words just remember those words that's enough for your norset exam okay paranoid schizo Par sorry not paranoid schizophrenia paranoid personality disorder in paranoid personality disorder the patients are suspicious they are sus they are suspicious of everybody okay so these people are going to do something to me these people are going to they they are suspicious to everyone that is called as paranoid personality disorder schizotypal personality disorder what is schizotypal personality disorder here the patient believes in super here the patient will have superstitious beliefs okay and they'll have magical thinking that is nothing but schizotypal disorder personality disorder okay and this schizotypal personality disorder one more update which we have okay it here remember person in personality disorders yes we see schizotypal but according to the latest update i have given you here okay according to icd 11 this schizotypal disorder is a separate diagnosis separate they made it as a separate psychotic disorder okay now they have removed from personality disorders and made it as 
separate psychotic disorder okay this schizotypal what is schizotypal they'll have magical thinking if you see magical thinking in your mcq just mark schizotypal personality disorder and next coming to schizoid personality okay what is schizoid personality schizoid personality is nothing but here the patient don't want to mingle again want to be single okay so doesn't want to socialize he don't want to socialize he want to say stingle okay that is what is uh, schizoid personality disorder next coming to completed with our cluster a disorders now coming to the cluster b disorders coming to the first type your anti social personality disorder very very important right your psychopaths anti social personality disorder okay um, more than 18 years of age if the patient is carrying out illegal activities that is called as anti social personality disorder okay less than 18 years what do you call it is called as conduct disorders right it is called as conduct disorders but more than 18 years we call it as anti social personality disorder okay next coming to borderline personality disorder see more borderline personality disorder you will observe that in females okay most commonly in females okay you can see multiple scars on the body also when you see the hands okay you can see multiple scars okay self mutilation is nothing but self harming them okay they'll take a blade and keep on cutting themselves okay that is seen in borderline personality they'll have okay they they cannot have a stable mood okay borderline personality disorders they'll have no, they'll not have a stable mood they keep on hurting themselves okay they keep keep on harming themselves that is called self mutilation okay where do you see this in borderline personality disorder next coming to histrionic personality disorder what is histrionic personality disorder again uh, most commonly you will see this in females okay so here those persons will draw the attention of everybody okay suppose uh, okay they want to be the center of the attention okay okay speaking loudly and they will uh, they want everyone to see them only okay okay everyone has to all the persons who are surrounding them has to pay attention to them okay they are attention seeking okay and they are dramatic okay if you see attention seeking and dramatic in your mcq mark histrionic personality disorder and come from your exam and then coming to last type of your cluster b your narcissistic personality disorder okay narcissistic personality is nothing but grandiose self oh, view of self okay i am the knowledgeable person i am the great okay no other persons are great i am the great okay okay i am the best no other persons are best okay that will be the com complaint in narcissistic personality disorder okay right usually i think you will see this commonly in society many people will be having this narcissistic personality disorder right okay i am the knowledgeable person no other persons are knowledgeable i am the best no other persons are best okay they'll have grandiose ideas on their own self that is called as narcissistic personality disorders next coming to cluster c okay what is cluster c cluster c you will see this in anxiety disorders okay first one is your obsessive compulsive personality disorder don't confuse this with your obsessive compulsive disorder okay which is a neurotic disorder please don't confuse with your ocd okay ocd is different ocpd is different obsessive compulsive personality disorder is different okay in obsessive personal okay what now you will ask me sir what is the difference between obsessive compulsive disorder and what is the difference between ocpd in ocd the uh, i already told you when i am discussing possession of thoughts right disorders of possessions of thoughts obsessions i've discussed right i told you that the obsessions are ego di dystonic okay that means they know the thoughts which are they are getting are unwanted senseless and they'll try to avoid them they will not accept the thoughts that is called as ego dystonic but here in ocpd they will accept the thoughts okay here, here they will accept the thoughts that is that here it is ego syntonic okay very important it is ego syntonic very very important uh, your ocd is ego dystonic ocpd is ego syntonic ocd people will not ac will try to avoid and will not accept the thoughts but ocpd people will accept the thoughts that is called as ego syntonic okay ocd ocpd uh, it is everything perfectionism they they'll follow all the rules protocols everything they they will do in a perfect manner okay um, perfectionism they will follow that is called ocpd okay please remember ego syntonic 
right that is how you will differentiate between ocd and ocpd and next coming to avoidant personality disorder very very important okay so what is avoidant personality disorder he, here they will try to uh, go into the society okay they want to be single here okay they want to be single here because they will have a fear that if they go into the society if they go in and mingle into the people people may criticize me people may uh, reject me okay so they will think that and they'll try to avoid the social gatherings that social interactions that is called as avoidant personality disorder next coming to dependent personality disorder the last type of cluster c personality disorder dependent personality disorder it's self-explanatory self-explanatory right see here dependent they want to be dependent always for even for a small decision they are dependent on others that is called as dependent personality disorder okay completed with personality disorders next coming to the somatoform disorders okay somatoform disorders yes uh, i think um, uh, mrs trojan was asking about this hypochondriasis is nothing but c hypochondriasis is not somatoform disorder let me tell you what is first somatoform disorders somatoform disorders are nothing but so the stress uh, in the patients okay whatever it may be the stress will get converted into physical symptoms okay that is what is your somatoform disorders okay so the stress the psychological stress is getting converted into physical symptoms somatic symptoms that is called as somatoform disorders that is what you observe in somatoform disorders coming to the first one okay hypochondriasis hypochondriasis is nothing but here the patient will come to you directly to the doctor and say that he will directly tell the diagnosis okay so and so i am having hypothyroidism doctor kindly treat me so and so i am having hyperthyroidism kindly treat me so and so i am having diabetes mellitus kindly treat me he will directly tell the diagnosis to the doctor and ask for the treatment that is called as hypochondriasis okay right uh, hypochondriasis is the old name now according to the icd-11 the latest name for hypochondriasis or the new name is illness anxiety disorder okay illness anxiety disorder is the new name for hypochondriasis okay and next coming to conversion disorder what is conversion disorder again one more type of uh, somatoform disorder see conversion disorder is the patient will tell you come to you with neurological symptoms bizarre neurological symptoms okay uh, like paralysis it can come to you with paralysis but actually it is not paralysis actually it is not paralysis okay which you will see in neurology okay you will study about paralysis right it is actually not paralysis but here the patient will come to you with paralysis which is not true paralysis okay so how do we differentiate true par psychological paralysis from neurological paralysis can anyone tell me it is Hoover's test. Very important. I want all of you to remember this. Hoover's test. You will, okay, you will ask the patient to sleep. Okay, this is one leg and this is one more leg of the patient. Okay. Okay, and you will try to put your hand. Okay. This is the paralyzed leg. Okay. This is the paralyzed leg. And this is the healthy leg. Okay. Just below the healthy leg, the examiner will place the hand. Okay, and he will ask the patient to, uh, what is this, sorry, he will place the hand under the paralyzed leg, okay, the examiner will place, place the hand under the paralyzed leg and he will ask the patient to uh, take, take move, up, move up the healthy leg, okay, he will ask to take up the healthy leg, okay, so in true paralysis, the patient only will take up the healthy leg okay he cannot move at all the paralysis leg so the uh, examiner cannot feel any resistance okay any resistance in the paralyzed leg but in false paralysis in psychological paralysis when he when he is asked to move the healthy leg above okay healthy leg above he will he has to resist right he has to he will resist the par, uh, par, uh, paralyzed leg okay that resistance can be felt by the examiner okay that's how we will differentiate between the psychological paralysis and neurological paralysis okay here in conversion disorder the patient will come to you with uh, neuro symptoms okay like paralysis okay that is not true paralysis okay how we will differentiate whether it is neurological or psychological is by hoover's test what is hoover's test 
you take your hand and place under the paralyzed leg and you will ask the patient to move uh, his healthy leg okay in health okay in really paralyzed like in neurologically paralyzed leg he cannot uh, he cannot he will not show any resistance under the paralyzed leg but in psychological paralysis the patient has to resist right he has to resist one leg and has to move the other leg right so that resistance can be felt by the examiner that is called as hoover's test right next <clears throat> okay next coming to one more important mcq very very important mcq uh, recently they have asked in uh, aims exam also okay labelle indifference okay you will see this in conversion disorder what is labelle indifference the patient will have severe symptoms okay but the patient is not worried at all the patient is happy the patient is happy okay the patient will have severe somatic symptoms but the patient is not worried about that he is happy that is called as labelle indifference you will see that in conversion disorder okay right conversion disorder is the old name what is the new name for conversion disorder functional neurological disorder functional neurological disorder is a new name for conversion disorder okay so now see here just now i have told you hypochondriasis and conversion conversion disorder right here the patient will do unintentionally but if he if he is doing intentionally for some purposes okay uh, that is called okay that i am going to discuss now for example okay you don't want to go for college right sometimes even you, everyone would have faced this right uh, uh, you, you would not have okay you don't like to go for college and you call uh, call to your class coordinator saying that so ma'am uh, i am uh, so and so i am having stomach pain so and so i am having diarrhea i cannot come to college okay uh, please give me sick leave okay this is nothing but malingering here the patient is not having any symptoms but for some purpose he is intentionally doing that okay intentionally doing to get sick leave or to get financial insurance okay even few people will produce false reports for financial claiming in their offices right okay so that is called as malingering <coughs> very very important and then coming to one more uh, one more important thing called munchausen syndrome one more important terminology which i said uh, which i would like to say is munchausen syndrome i have already explained this in syndromes in psychiatry I, again i am not explaining here okay right M what is the uh, latest name for munchausen syndrome is factitious disorder okay factitious disorder right which is nothing but your doctor shopping right so completed with the today's theory let me tell you few important image based questions that they, that can be asked in psychiatry okay see uh, these are image ibqs which can be asked in your uh, norset exam okay see here the patient will tell to you uh, okay normally how if you want to see yourself you will go stand in front of the mirror and see right but here the patient without mirror also can see himself okay see here the patient can see here himself without a mirror it is not possible so this is called as otoscopy exactly opposite to otoscopy see here the patient will tell you sir i cannot find myself in the mirror okay see here there is no image he, he is thinking that, that okay there is no image right even though even though i am seeing myself in the mirror i cannot see myself in the mirror that is called as negative otoscopy it is exactly opposite to your otoscopy in otoscopy see the patient will tell you without okay normally how if you want to see your face you will go and see in the mirror but here the patient will tell you okay the same person is sitting in front of me okay same person is i can i could able to see me who is sitting in front of like who is sitting beside to me okay i can able to see similar person looking me sitting beside to me sleeping okay with okay they simply you can remember in the absence of mirror if they are visualizing themselves that is called otoscopy what is negative otoscopy negative otoscopy is nothing but okay even though if they, they say they say that there is no mirror they, no image formed in the mirror okay i cannot see myself in the mirror okay that is called auto negative otoscopy okay next one more image based question that they can ask is very very important image that they can ask in exams is 
very important what is this rosage ink block test okay rosage ink blot test okay 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 they'll give just give an ink blot like this and ask okay so, okay ask the patient to describe a story okay so see this image and tell me what you are seeing okay this is a personality test remember personality test the personality as, is assessed by this rosage ink block test they'll okay what you are seeing here they will ask okay what you are seeing it's a simple they can whatever they think they'll tell you okay it's like butterfly it is appearing like butterfly whatever it may be so whatever they are thinking they'll tell you this is a personality test okay what type of test is this it is a projective test okay which is used to assess your personality okay rosage ink block uh, ink blot test okay they'll simply give an ink, ink blot and ask them to narrate a story okay the patient has to narrate the story and see one more image they'll give an image like this and ask uh, the patient to narrate a story this is called tat tit for tat what is tat thematic appreciation test thematic appreciation test this is also used to assess your personality okay again what type of test is this projective projective test they simply show this image to the patient and ask okay narrate the story what you are seeing this okay he has to narrate the story by seeing this image this is called thematic appreciation test and one more is rosage ink blot test you have to remember okay i think we have completed with today's session of psychiatry remaining i'll cover in the next session okay i'll try to share this pdf in my telegram group okay if you are not uh, if you have not joined still in my telegram group please join my telegram channel you can find all my live session notes there in my telegram channel i'll give the link in the description box you can join and get the notes from there and uh, one more important point uh, i would like to tell to you all is okay so please concentrate more on major subject okay now it's time to do grant us okay do okay uh, spend more time on your mcqs okay now the people who are still studying stop <coughs> studying okay start with your revisions okay start with your revisions okay revisions are key to success it's not only what uh, preparing the content okay okay stop preparing content okay the, now there is less time okay start with your revisions and how many times you revise that good marks you get in your exam and then do mcqs do grant us uh, don't uh, i don't suggest to do grant us daily but at least two days or three days once do grant us okay that is very very important in this last minute okay and don't uh, obviously follow my live sessions okay and i'm going to share this notes in uh, the telegram group okay so any doubts in today's session okay please tell me any yes thank you all thank you all thank you lotus any doubts in today's session thank you ma'am thank you so much any doubts in today's session thank you swati sumant okay telegram link for telegram i will give you quader uh, uh, i am giving you the telegram link you can find out uh, find that in description box okay right okay thank you ashwati thank you so much remaining okay uh, okay thank you thank you pandi any doubts in today's session okay so uh, let okay i think okay thank you thank you all so remaining uh, remaining i'll try to cover it in next session okay okay th thank you swati suman thank you so much okay baby kumari is okay thank you thank you lot so nice of you okay um, so see you all in one more interesting se session very soon uh, so do subscribe to my channel do share do like to my videos okay don't forget to share to your friends who are preparing for all central government exams it is not content is same everywhere Do, whether you are preparing for jipmer exam rrb esic the content is same okay it will not change psychiatry psychiatry everywhere it will not change right 
so very soon i am going to come with come with part 2 also swati suman don't worry okay maybe within one or two days i'll come with part 2 where i'll complete anti psychiatry in part 2 okay within two parts i'll complete anti psychiatry okay half of the psychiatry is completed by today remaining half will be completed by within next two days okay don't worry your psychiatry is my responsibility okay remaining subjects you have to study because since there is a less time Uh, it will be difficult for me to make uh, ra- ultra rapid revision sessions uh, on all subjects okay so thank you thank you all so good night see you all in one more interesting session